Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Yeast Nutrition Management webinar. Thank you for all being connected today. My name is Eglantine Chauffaut. I'm the winemaking product manager for Bucher Vassin North America, and I represent La Motabier. I will be your speaker today. So I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you all enjoyed a nice cup of coffee and you're ready to talk about yeast nutrition. Before I go um, into the presentation, I would like to introduce you the two partners for this webinar. So we have Bucher Vassel, designer, manufacturer, and seller of material for grape and wine processing since 1856. So quite a bit of experience all around the world in wineries. And then we have La Motabier, renowned enological product brand for their high quality. They have been founded in Bordeaux um, in 1878, so 140 years of expertise and, exp and winemaking consulting. They have been mainly focused in Europe. We are now making it available for you in North America. And then as Bucher Vassel North America wants to ex extend their portfolio, we want to have a complete offering for winemakers, complete solutions for winemakers. So we are distributing Bucher Vassel equipment, La Motabier winemaking product, but also Costral bottling line and Caso pumps. Now let's talk about nutrition. As you know, nutrition is an essential parameter to manage. Without the proper yeast nutrition introduced at the right stage, yeast is gonna be stressed, yeast is gonna produce off flavor and probably fail to finish fermentation. So focusing on uh, yeast nutrition is actually not a luxury, but it's a necessity. So I would like to start by looking at what yeast actually needs. So if we look at the requirements of the yeast, um, we can see that as many organisms, yeast uh, has many, many similarities with us. So yeast needs a balanced diet of nitrogen source for the protein synthesis, sterol and fatty acids for the component of the yeast cell membrane, and also um, vitamins and minerals as coenzyme to maintain uh, the metabolism active. There is also other parameters that are important to consider, such as oxygen, turbidity, and temperature of the fermentation. So everyone focus on nitrogen as it is an essential and principal aspect of uh, yeast nutrition, but that's not the only one. So please keep in mind that if your membrane is actually not healthy and not working properly, nitrogen is not going to be assimilated. If uh, there is no coenzyme or we are lacking of um, yeah, coenzymes, the metabolism of the yeast is not going to be active. So fermentation is actually not going to finish properly. So it is important to consider uh, every single point of the requirements of the yeast. And um, that's why I would, like to talk the I would like to talk about the importance of having a balanced diet. So yeast nutrition is not only about nitrogen, but it is actually, um, we are talking about a balanced diet. Then let's look what can happen if we are, when we are lacking of nutrients. So when we are in a nutrient deficiency situation, usually we have a poor yeast development, which means unhealthy cells, but also uh, not enough cells. Poor yeast development results in stack or sluggish fermentation and risk of microbial control, microbial contamination. Second uh, point of uh, when there is a nutrient deficiency is H2S production. So yeast will produce H2S when um, they are lacking of uh, nitrogen. So basically what happens is that when they don't have enough nitrogen, all the sulfur that is assimilated by the yeast is going to be rejected via H2S because there is no um, amino acid to put it on and to create sulfur um, containing amino acids. So Lacking of nitrogen is directly related to H2S production, which usually results in mercaptan and disulfides in wine. Nutrient deficiency will induce a yeast stress. When yeast is stressed, she is producing off flavors, such as VA, but also um, aromas that uh, molecules that are going to combine with sulfur later uh, when you do your sulfur adds on wine. So we are having a higher rate of SO2 combining. Nutrient deficiency, particularly if we have a deficiency in coenzymes, will have um, will stop the metabolism of the yeast. So we will stop um, before we get to alcohol. So there is a stack or sluggish fermentation with residual sugar, but also 
there is um, a higher rate of SO2 combining molecules. Obviously, when we are uh, lacking of nutrients, yeast is focusing on surviving, not really on producing aromas, and the metabolism of the yeast is not optimized, so we are a much lower aromatic performance. The other aspect of um, nutrient uh, balanced nutrition is actually to talk about excessive nitrogen. So excessive nitrogen can happen, and this has also a pretty bad uh, consequences on the wine. So balanced nutrition really doesn't mean more is better, but means let's try to get the right amount of nitrogen and be in the right window. So excessive nitrogen will usually give you excessive biomass. Excessive biomass is going to induce a deficiency and stress. So we are back to the first slides with stack fermentation, risk of contamination of flavor production, high SO2 combining rate, and lower aromatic performance. Excessive nitrogen means also residual nitrogen in uh, the wine, which means food for the other microbes, so we have a higher risk of microbial contamination. Reduced uh, aromatic complexity, because um, the yeast is actually stressed and doesn't uh, spend energy to uh, produce aromas and we are having a production of ethyl carbamate so that's when we have too much DAP or too much ammonium ions. Yeast cannot store the ammonium ions into the cells so she is using them right away. That's where usually we are producing excessive biomass but also when it's too much she is gonna reject the ammonium ions into ethyl carbamate which is a molecule considered as cancerogen for humans. Okay, so very important to control um, nutrients, nitrogen content, but also full nutrition and have a balanced diet for the yeast. So the first step uh, that we are going to talk about is to actually uh, promote a healthy yeast or healthy cells. So for this, we have to talk about uh, the yeast membrane. So basically, I like to take the analogy of running a marathon, so fermenting. Um, completely uh, a must for the yeast is like us running a marathon. So the first thing we have to do before we start to run a marathon, if we want to succeed, is to actually um, train. Train and have a healthy lifestyle before, have a very strong body, have um, being prepared, have the right gears uh, to run properly. So that's the same with the yeast. And it happened that the gear of the yeast and the healthy development of the yeast is going to be um, our membrane. So the membrane of the yeast is very important. Uh, it plays a very important role in terms of protection of the yeast uh, to maintain uh, the pH difference between inside and outside. But also it has an important role in terms of a yeast activity. That's where all the exchange inside outside are happening. And the last point is that it has a strong uh, impact on how the yeast can adapt um, herself to difficult conditions or to changing conditions and to resist to difficult conditions. So as you can see, uh, the membrane is composed of, um, it's a bilayer of lipids, but also there is a big molecule such as big protein that will need to move. So we actually need to promote a fluid membrane, that's a healthy membrane. The reason is that there is movement needed in the membrane in this B uh, layer of lipids. So there is some lateral movement between lipids, there is some flip-flop between layers of lipids, and there is also um, movement of uh, receptors that open and close to bring some molecule in and out, and the yeast needs to change shape sometimes depending on the condition outside. So a fluid membrane, as you can see in this little picture on the um, left side of your screen, is uh, healthy. How to get a fluid membrane? we need to get this little elbow in the lipids, in the fatty acid chain, which means an insaturation. Okay, a membrane that looks like this here on the viscous picture on the right side of your screen is actually very unhealthy. It's going to be a very rigid membrane that cannot uh, move and any movement or any change of environment outside will actually break uh, the membrane and um, leading to death of the cell. So we want to promote a fluid membrane to increase yeast resistance, to limit yeast stress, to ensure yeast cell membrane exchange 
and to improve fermentation activity, but also um, to improve all the metabolism of the yeast. Okay. To promote fluid membrane, we um, need to have unsaturated fatty acids. So this can be done at several steps of the winemaking process. The most important step is going to be during rehydration when the yeast is actually building up population and the multiplication is going to happen. But second step will be during uh, alcoholic fermentation when we bring oxygen into the must or into the fermenting um, must. Oxygen can be used by the yeast to create this insaturation. So Lametabier did a lot of work on um, rehydration nutrients and we came out with Enostim, which is a yeast protector that promotes healthy cell development. So we are talking about a blend of vitamin, mineral, sterol, ergosterol and unsaturated fatty acids. So the yeast can use directly these nutrients as a um, membrane component and will produce um, very healthy cells. So we use it at rehydration. 20 gram per hectoliter, so one gram per gram of yeast uh, is a recommended dosage. And then depending the condition of the fermentation, so if we are adding extra um, difficulties, let's say, so if we are low turbidity, low temperature or high temperature and higher bricks, we want to add uh, 10 gram per hectoliter of an uh, in addition to the 20. So using an ostimate rehydration is going to improve your fermentation kinetics. As you can see here on the graph, we have a better yeast implantation. Um, we have having a shorter lag phase here. So the pink curve is going to be the curve with an ostim during rehydration and the gray curve is the curve of the control with no an ostim. So we have a better yeast implantation, shorter lag phase, but we also have um, a better resistance. If we look at the, the end of the fermentation, uh, it's much more uh, neat and clean um, when we use an ostim, which means we add better resistance, so better membrane fluidity, less yeast stress, higher resistance to alcohol and toxic compound, and we do have a higher rate, survival rate at the end of fermentation. Also, having a cleaner end of fermentation is allowing you uh, to have a better microbial control. So if you look at the table here, uh, we can see that in the control, we had higher Brettanomyces population at the end of fermentation uh, with higher volatile phenol than in the wine where we rehydrate the yeast with an ostim. So very important to use rehydration nutrients, not only to ensure a good implantation, a strong yeast, but also to actually limit um, sluggish fermentation and uh, microbial contamination. There is also an impact on aromatic profile. Using an ostim will give you cleaner wine with more um, intense aromas. So as you can see here, using an ostim allows you to limit stress and to have a better uh, membrane exchange, so better assimilation of nitrogen, which means lower um, lower stress and lower production of, uh, of sulfur compounds. So if we want to reduce the H2S production, using an ostim is going to be a great idea, great strategy. As you can see in the control, we reduce the production of H2S, methanthiol and dimethyl sulfur. Also, we are reducing the production of volatile acidity. Again, we are reducing the stress and improving the resistance of the yeast. And a last point, we are increasing the um, revelation of aromas and the production of aromas. So this is mainly due to the fact that we're improving yeast metabolism. The yeast is not stressed, the yeast is, yeast is strong and resistant and can assimilate all the precursors present and spend time or energy working on um, revealing these aromas. So in this graph, you are, we are actually increasing the quantity of thiolic uh, compounds uh, volatilized during fermentation or produced during fermentation. Okay, so another point um, that is important to know when we use rehydration nutrients such as enosteam, we are reducing the needs of nitrogen uh, for the yeast. As we increase the resistance of the yeast, we optimize the uh, nitrogen assimilation and the use of this nitrogen by the yeast. So we can consider that 20 gram per hectoliter can reduce the needs of nitrogen of a good 10 milligram per liter. 
Okay, so the second step we are going to talk about in yeast nutrition is the nitrogen. Nitrogen is needed for protein synthesis, um, which uh, protein is a major uh, component of yeast. So it's very important to have a good protein synthesis for multiplication, but for also healthy membrane and all um, yeast metabolism. So all the enzymes and all the molecules that are involved in fermentation. There is two different types of nitrogen that yeast can assimilate and that are naturally present on grapes. Um, they can be assimilated by different ways. There is a direct diffusion through the membrane lipids, as you can see here. There is a passive transport of facilitated diffusion. Um, so again, through the membrane lipid with a transporter here. And there is active transport that requires uh, energy from the yeast to be assimilated. So first a type of nitrogen that uh, yeast can assimilate is ammonia or ammonium ions, which are present in DAP. Um, they are very small molecules, as you can see, and they are very easy to assimil assimilate by the yeast, so they can diffuse by passive transport. Um, the yeast is going to prefer to assimilate it because she doesn't have to do anything to assimilate it. It's very direct um, diffusion, so it's very easy, it's very quick. The problem with uh, ammonium is that it cannot be accumulated in the yeast cells, so the yeast is using it as it's coming, uh, which usually causes large uh, heat spike and overpopulation, and then we go to our excessive nitrogen uh, content slides where we are having stack fermentation and of flavor development and risk of contamination, higher SO2 combining molecules, lower aromatic performance. So. Ammonia is considered as a junk food of the um, yeast, so it can be very useful when the yeast needs a little um, kick and a little boost of energy because um, it is very easy to assimilate, but uh, it's not healthy to feed the yeast only with ammonium ions. Okay, so the second type of nitrogen that the yeast can assimilate is amino acids. As you can see, um, on the screen, amino acids are a much more complex molecule, much more sophisticated and healthy food um, for the yeast. So we, uh, they are much harder to assimilate because they are bigger molecules. So they go through, uh, for the small ones, through facilitated uh, diffusion, but most of them go through an active transport to so require energy. So the yeast is not gonna go first with amino acids, but we want the yeast to eat amino acids. The yeast can absorb amino acids, assimilate amino acids, and then store it in the vacuole and use them slowly as she needs during the fermentation. They are also the direct building blocks of um, protein, so the yeast just take them and use them right away. And when she doesn't do this, she is actually cutting them and rejecting another part of it, which is uh, transformed and used to produce esters and acetates, so aromatic uh, compounds. So amino acids are um, the positive uh, healthy food for the yeast. Um, as you can understand, they are much harder to assimilate, so the yeast will assimilate them in a situation that she is not stressed, which means at the beginning of the fermentation, when there is no alcohol, when there is all the food she needs and all um, temperature is not too high, not too much population, and everything is actually perfect. So, um, sometimes amino acids are actually not uh, sufficient. So, we want to favor amino acids, we want the yeast to use amino acids at the beginning, but then it is important to keep a balanced diet. Um, actually, on grapes, naturally, um, grapes can usually have like 70% of amino acids, 30% of ammonium ions, so there is um, this ratio between amino acids and, and ammonia, and I think it's very good to respect this ratio, so we want to, um, in major party, complement with amino acids, because that's uh, the healthy food and that's what is naturally present in the grapes, but ammonia can be um, very useful when the yam is low and when the yeast needs a little kick of energy. So Lamotabier um, developed a nutrient that is composed of only organic nitrogen that has actually uh, the nutritive power of a DAP, so of ammonia, 
but the quality and nutrition of amino acids. So the name of this nutrient is called OptiFlor O. And we can consider that 10 grams per hectoliter of OptiFlor O is actually equivalent of 10 grams per hectoliter of DAP. I'm um, basis, basing uh, this information on the graph that you can see below, that basically we are comparing uh, the fermentation um, kinetics, uh, completion, and uh, yeast population. And we could see that using 10 grams per hectoliter of OptiFlor O, which is the green line, uh, comparing to 10 grams per hectoliter of DAP, which is the red line, uh, at the same moment addition, we have the same result in terms of um, fermentation kinetics and cell number. So basically, OptiFlor O, even if 10 grams per hectoliter of OptiFlor O gives you only 5 milligrams per liter of nitrogen as amino acid form, it is actually considered as much higher nutritive power. So we consider it as equivalent of 20 milligrams per liter of uh, nitrogen under ammonium form. Okay, so organic nitrogen, but very powerful in terms of nutritive power. We use it during the first third of the fermentation, 10 to 40 grams per hectoliter. The legal limit is 40 grams per hectoliter. You have all the information on these nutrients on the link below here on our website. There is other effects than just fermentation kinetics on uh, OptiFlor O. So obviously it does improve yeast metabolism. So it is a sustainable uh, nutrition for the yeast. There is no overproduction of biomass. It maintains the cells in optimal physiological states. And we are uh, ending with cleaner wines and less aromas. Actually, we made trials on base one for distillation, and we realized there is a huge impact on uh, distillate quality. So or using OptiFlor O allows us to lower our acetaldehydes, lower our volatile, low uh, acidity, lower our superior alcohol production, and higher our ethyl state, which are very qualitative um, esters, aromas. The second effect of OptiFlor O is a detoxifying effect. So we realize that um, we, using OptiFlor O, there is an absorption of C8 and C10 compounds, which are fatty acids toxic for malolactic bacteria, bacteria. So we are improving the growth of malolactic bacteria, but also there is an absorbing effect in um, pesticide residues. So OptiFlor O has a very um, strong impact in detoxifying the mast reducing the fatty acids inhibiting malolactic bacteria and reducing the pesticide residue that inhibits yeast and bacteria. The third uh, positive effect is that there is micronutrients uh, in, in the composition of OptiFlor O that are essential for ML bacteria. So we also improve the malolactic bacteria metabolism. So with one addition, we are improving yeast and bacteria uh, nutrition. As you can see in this graph, we are reducing the lag phase of um, malolactic fermentation and we are reducing the length of malolactic fermentation. Then again, um, sometimes in a low yan situation, we, are, um, we need to add some ammonium ions. Usually it's better to add ammonium ions um, within a complex nutrients. So we do have OptiFerm. OptiFerm is our complex formulation of inactivated yeast, ammonium, nitrogen, and thiamine. So we are giving some vitamins, mineral, and sterol uh, to um, the yeast, and we have this detoxifying effect. So we increase resistance and we detoxify the mast, but also we are bringing mineral nitrogen under the um, ammonium form for an easy and fast assimilation when the yeast needs just a quick, um, fast kick on energy, okay? So um, if we want to summarize um, a balanced and proper nutrition strategy, if you want to run your marathon and complete the marathon by uh, actually being still healthy, you want first to be prepared. So first, be prepared physically, prepare the yeast, protect the yeast, give her every, all the gears that she can have, uh, she can need um, to run this marathon. So an at hydration, 20 grams per hectoliters is what we will recommend. Then 
make sure the day before and at the breakfast you have a very strong meal that is food of energy that you in ingredients that you can store in your vacuole and use slowly as you need during the full race so the yeast will use optiflor o uh, amino acids at use it at the beginning of the fermentation she is going to store it in the vacuole and use it in a slow release way during the entire fermentation so 10 to 40 grams per hectoliters if needed during the run during the fermentation especially for lower yan situation we will need to use optifirm which is a um, blend of dap vitamin and survival factor plus um, some oxygen to improve the resistance of the membrane so to make the membrane more fluid doing this full strategy we will end up with um, um, a winner of the marathon so now uh, let's talk about the big question uh, that everybody is asking and i'm gonna try to answer how much yan question uh, with something else than it depends so obviously it depends of many parameters so it depends of the health condition microbial contamination sugar and ripeness um, but here i'm gonna give you some guidelines that can help you um, on deciding how much yarn you need to have a healthy fermentation first consider to one bricks is one milligram per liter of yarn 10 milligram per liter of yarn needed that's a very rough estimate but this works enough minimum yarn needed for to have a good um, yeast development 150 maximum yet needed to not become in the excessive uh, nitrogen 250 milligram per liter when you do have bricks higher than 25 uh, so you will need more than 250 milligram per liter but in reality you don't that's the nitrogen content then when you do have bricks higher than this what we want to make sure is that the yeast is actually strong enough very well prepared and as all um, as very healthy membranes that can adapt and resist to high alcohol content but 250 in yen should be enough the adjustments you can do for the calculation needs uh, when you use an osteam you can reduce of 10 milligram per liter uh, your needs because an osteam will improve the assimilation of the nitrogen will improve the resistance of the yeast and reduce the needs the yeast has if you are using a yeast with higher uh, nitrogen requirements you want to increase your calculation of 20 milligram per liter in the yen if you are using a yeast with low nitrogen requirement, you can reduce um, your uh, needs of 20 milligram per liter. Okay, so um, using this and using this big table uh, that I'm not gonna go through completely today, but then you will have um, the presentation in hand. Um, you can figure out how uh, you want your um, nutrition, yeast nutrition to be okay so always important to use rehydration nutrients that's gonna be a baseline for any situation and then optiflor o as much as you can because that's a much higher nutritive power and higher um, positive uh, effect on the yeast and the final wine and then optiferm uh, or dap is here to complement when needed also to help you uh, measure in how much yarn you need we have an app that you can download on Apple Android um, that is a LA Uno solution that will help you to do all the calculation. And also you can use our website. We have a calculator tools that will help you uh, calculating everything you need. Okay, so there is another part in yeast nutrition that uh, I would love to discuss with you um, because additionally to ensure a clean, complete and healthy fermentation, um, the type of nutrition can also impact uh, the aromas produced by the yeast. Okay, so we already saw that um, with adding sterol and ergosterol via an steam, for example, we can increase the positive aromas by improving the membrane resistance, activity, and efficiency, and we can reduce the negative aromas, such as uh, reductive aromas, um, again by increasing the resistance and uh, nitrogen. Um, uptake efficiency 
So now let's look at how we can increase the production of esters of the production of tyre. So how can we direct uh, the wine style with um, yeast nutrition? So let's look a little bit deeper into yeast metabolism. So yeast is producing esters and acetates by two different pathways. Um, there is the first pathway that is a fermentative pathway where uh, she's producing ethanol and then this ethanol is gonna be um, used with fatty acids, complex with fatty acids to produce ethyl esters or fatty acids. These esters are usually more qualitative, they are a little bit lighter in uh, the aromas. They are uh, more uh, delicate, floral, powdery type of aromas. Then we have uh, the pathway of the amino acids, so the Ehrlich pathway, which amino acids are going to be transformed in higher alcohol. And then with the acetyl transferase activity of the yeast, we are going to be able to uh, transform this higher alcohol into acetate esters. Acetate esters are um, the most commonly found ester in wine that uh, are actually more than 50% of the wine aroma as a baseline and they are more uh, fruity, a little bit stronger smell, a little bit more pungent, but also very fresh. So acetate esters, so most common um, part of the wine aromas. How can we increase the production of acetate ester? It's going to be mainly depending on the yeast strain, so with a strong acetyl transferase activity. In our portfolio, Excellence STR is the yeast that we recommend to produce more um, esters that has a strong acetyl transferase activity. Ethyl esters, how can we increase the production of ethyl esters is we want to increase the content of ergosterols. Uh, this has been uh, proven by Bayanov in 1898. So there is many actually articles that can show uh, this pathway and show how increasing the ergosterol content, we increase the production of ethyl esters, but also reducing the fermentation speed. So having a lower turbidity, lower temperature and anaerobic condition will improve or increase the production of ethyl esters. Here a table that just summarizes which ester in which category and what they smell. So you have in yellow the one that smells like acetate, that are acetate ester, that smells like banana, rose, pear, and in uh, red the one that are considered as ethyl esters that come from the metabolism of um, fatty acids or ergosterols that are smelling more like floral, green apple, and pineapple. So with this knowledge, and after many years of study, uh, Lamotte Abbey developed OptiEster. OptiEster is a selection of amino acid and ergosterol that um, it has been developed to promote the production of esters focused on ethyl esters. So the application of OptiEster opti will be, so it's a nutrient um, that we add during the first third of the fermentation at 30 grams per hectoliters. If we want to optimize the effect, we want to be at lower turbidity, lower temperature in anaerobic condition. It is very effective on grapes um, coming from high yield vineyards or on natural varieties, but also on thermovinified um, must. And as you can see in the graph uh, here on the side, we are, uh, so the dark red is going to be the optiester and the light pink is going to be the control. And we are actually increasing, obviously, we are increasing some um, isoamyl acetate, so some uh, banana aromas and some pear aromas. But the most important, we are increasing pineapple, green apple, floral component as well. And actually, there is a big increase compared to the control, which in total, we are increasing of 44%, uh, basically between 30 and 50% the amount of esters um, produced by the yeast. All the information on these nutrients are present on our website in the link below here. There is another category of aromas that winemakers can um, increase the production by uh, yeast nutrition, which is um, thiolic compounds. So La Motabie developed um, in the same idea than OptiEster, but focused on tiles. La Motabie developed OptiTile. So optitiol is a yeast nutrient that is um, basically com composed of uh, inactivated yeast rich in sulfur peptides. So composed of cysteine, homocysteine, glycine cysteine, glutamyl cysteine, acetyl cysteine, and glutathione. 
And uh, this, um, all these uh, amino acids and sulfur peptides are going to be assimilated by the yeast and uh, transformed into tiles. So as you can see in uh, the graph um, below, when we compare controlled with optitiol addition at 30 gram per hecto um, at the beginning of the fermentation, you can see that we increase of a good um, 30 percent the amount of tiolic, tiolic compounds produced and this difference is actually uh, perduring through time because nine months after alcoholic fermentation we still have this difference so we are increasing the tiolic compounds um, production but we also are using glutathion as an antioxidant so there is two action of this optitiol it is better to use it before inoculation since we benefit more of the antioxidant effect and it is completely linear so if we use 50, 30 gram per hectoliters we will have a stronger effect than at 15. then uh, as you already know producing tiles um, is not only related to yeast nutrition so it is a little bit but there is a lot of other parameters to really um, control to make sure we have uh, tiolic like optimized tiolic expression and this uh, through the entire winemaking process. So increasing tiol production of tiolic compounds in wine starts with extracting these compounds from the yeast, from the cells of uh, the grapes, protecting these compounds from oxidation during, especially during the first stage of um, winemaking uh, process. So in the juice stage is very important increase the level of aromatic precursors. That's where the nutrition and optitiol comes in the process of uh, tiolic um, optimization. And then express these tiolic uh, precursors into volatile tiol with temperature, yeast, and enzymatic activity. So there is a webinar that um, we did a little bit a few months ago on uh, specifically on tiolic uh, pro optimization so you can watch it on bvnorthamerica.com slash webinars and also on our youtube channel um, so feel free to watch it anytime you want so basically um, if i want to summarize about yeast nutrition the take-home message on yeast nutrition is that yeast nutrition is not a lax but it is a necessity the most important point of yeast nutrition is to think about balanced diet. Don't focus only on nitrogen because sometimes nitrogen needs are much higher than what you could do. But if you are actually making the yeast more resistant to stress and optimizing this nitrogen assimilation and use, you will be able to reduce your need in nitrogen. So very important to look at um, the complex picture and a balanced diet. Again, if you want to run the marathon and want to win, the first thing you're going to do is, okay, know your uh, physical abilities to start with. So measure your initial yen. But then uh, use an steam for rehydration to reinforce, train, prepare the yeast and make sure she's going to be resistant to all the difficult conditions she's going to meet during fermentation. Make sure you have a healthy food at the beginning in preparation of this marathon, the meal before running or the breakfast before running is going to be a very slow food release. So full of amino acids, but with still a strong nutritive power. Optiflor O as a first addition is um, what we would recommend. Then if you do need during the race and during fermentation, a little kick of energy and uh, fast and easy assimilable energy for the yeast, OptiFirm or DAP will be needed. Again, you can actually um, run this marathon, be healthy at the end and smell good also. So you can also increase the aromatic profile um, of um, the wine and orientate the pathway of um, the metabolism of the yeast by using OptiEster to increase the production of ethyl esters and these very nice flowery aromas and you can increase the production of op uh, tiles with optitiles before inoculation. So thank you very much for uh, your attention. Uh, this webinar is gonna be available on our YouTube channel as all the previous one. If you have any question, please visit both websites, bvnorthamerica.com or lamotabie.com slash en for the English version.
You can email me any question you have at eglantine.chauffour at bouchervasselin.com. I will uh, make sure I answer my best to all your questions. And so now um, I'm going to open the question and answer portion and feel free to ask all the questions you have. Thank you very much. <laughs>